This video is to explain how to assemble a uh, rack and pinion gear for the robot. Uh, now this uh, is a very useful uh, device that is basically the basis of this uh, two-leg robot. Um, there's only four printed parts. The pinion right here, the um, cat top, the case, and the rack. This is a 20 centimeter uh, rack. Um, these are, this is modulus one for those interested. I made this in Blender, which is a great rendering program. It's free. Okay, this clamping coupling, I really find is one of the best ways to couple a motor shaft to a piece of plastic. It's very a very strong coupling. This one is a metric six to metric five. The shaft is six millimeters. It fits in the metric six. Um, the important thing to remember is when you're ordering these, you can get these on AliExpress for like $2 each, that you want to get the kind with the 6 millimeter on top and the screw hole on the right, because that's what's going to fit this particular um, uh, pinion. Alternatively, you can uh, go in and model this pinion and, and extend this hole, or remove, put the hole on the opposite side if you happen to buy the wrong kind, uh, the other kind with the screw on the left side. They do come in both way at uh, both directions so okay so first thing you want to do is put this coupling align it so that the holes are showing uh, the holes in the coupling are showing through the holes in the pinion and then put this screw that came with the uh, 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 let's see that comes with the coupling let me put it in like this so, um, and a little lock washer. Okay, wait, so let me get this thing out. The screw and this lock washer, I think this is a metric three. Okay, I just lost all neuronical control for a minute. <laughs> a metric three. Uh, this one, it was a 12. Yeah, it must be a metric three, 12 in length. So you're gonna want to, um, which way this goes into the, the pinion doesn't really matter, so long as these are aligned. Actually, it does, probably. You just have to make sure that these holes are aligned. So on the side that has the metric six, which is going to couple with the gear, put in the screw that came with the coupling, just to sort of hold it in alignment there with your hex wrench. Uh, this is, I think, a 3.5. It's made for a metric three screw. Um, not all the way, but just in there enough to hold it until it has a little bit of friction, I would say. Okay. And you can go ahead and put this as a metric 12 socket cap with a metric five uh, spacer. Another combination that works, if this doesn't give you enough uh, length, you can use a metric 16 socket head with a metric 10 spacer. But this one seems to work, metric five and a metric, metric five spacer, copper spacer, and then a um, metric 12 socket head, metric three, metric three 12 in length, uh, socket head machine screw. So put that one in. This one doesn't really even have to go in that tightly, just until it has, it creates a little bit of friction. There you go, it's enough friction. So now we're gonna be putting it into the case. So this is a thing where you kinda of wanna do it all at once here. You kinda of wanna put the, the motor in the, first you have to put the motor in. You can put the rack in at the same time. Uh, if you don't put the rack in at the same time, that means that you'll have to feed it in, you know. Uh, but you can do that after too. But it tends to hold it up I think where it needs to be at the correct height, you want to align that hole up. Uh, you want to put in this, you can see align it with the screw holes and the shaft hole. Put that in there. Um, now uh, you can see that the, the rack will turn the gear. It has to be a pretty tight fit. So now you can, um, you can also, uh, you can do one of two things. You can tighten this, coupling onto the motor uh, 
which is a good idea. Or you can screw the motor in. Uh, fasten the motor to the carriage, which is also a good idea. This is a little tricky. You might want to get a, like a needle nose pliers to put that in there. It can be a little tr tricky. Then go through the hole to screw this thing in. It's a little tricky, but you get the hang of it eventually. And I find that only one screw is really necessary here to hold this motor to the carriage. As long as you're to the case, as long as you're, if you screw it in nice and tightly, then you shouldn't have any trouble. Yeah, it's probably the good thing to do. I mean, not too tightly because you'll go through the plastic, but tightly enough so that it really doesn't move. All right, so now let's go ahead and tighten the coupling to the gear motor, to the sh motor shaft. So I've got about as tight as I can take it, and this is really the trick to this thing, is use a big adjustable pliers. Grab it firmly when you've gone as tightly as you can, and give it about a, half, a quarter turn, I would say, a 90 degree turn. Uh, maybe a little bit more, 180 maybe. Many times you can hear it go, but yeah, you don't really have to necessarily. Just so it's like a 180 degree turn should be more than enough. So it's, you really don't want to strip it and you have to be very careful. Then you can feel that it's really on there quite tightly. The rack will not move anymore. So that's pretty darn tight on there. Um, yeah, 90 degrees to 180 degrees, no more than that. Um, should be fine. So now you want to put the... Uh, top on and for that uh, and this is a, a the top is pretty the, the case can be 40 percent I think uh, infill the rack can also be 40 percent infill but this I really think needs to be this top needs to be 100 percent infill because it takes a lot of pressure uh, because this is what holds this rack and pinion to the robot so that's kind of uh, an important thing. So these are countersunk metric 3, 12 in length uh, machine screws. And you want those to go in there. It's fine if they they cut a thread in the plastic. That doesn't really matter um, because the nuts beneath it are not really embedded. Uh, yeah, just screw those through and uh, Attach your metric three nut underneath in the bottom. It's a good idea just to hold it and and then screw the the screw in. It's kind of a little tricky. Definitely a needle nose pliers can be helpful here and I'll just hold it and start turning until it can get on there yeah there it goes and then you can tighten it I mean probably hand tightened is enough I think um, but it does need to be pretty darn tight and then the other one and yeah, it's pretty straightforward here in fact, maybe just when the screw is coming out is a good time to plop this nut on. Perfecto. And you know, I mean, if you can always, of course, hold the hold this nut while you're screwing it in to get a better, stronger connection. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, you know, and if you need to, you can always put a battery, two battery leads, onto the motor if you need to remove the rack or anything like that. This will then go on to some part of the robot 
and a metric five screw or metric four screw can also be used. Can hold that, connect that to the, the motor or to the robot. So there you have it. This is a really wonderful device. It's like um, almost like I think it's a DC gear motor that's like a stepper motor because these teeth provide kind of large steps and they have a tremendous holding strength. So, you know, you can go like one tooth, two teeth, you know, it provides really like sort of stepper motor uh, type of uh, motion, I think.